What if your negotiation skills are the difference between a family holiday abroad or a week at home? The difference between a great deal for the public purse or a public outcry? The separation between a good Brexit deal or a bad one? Or leaving without one entirely, but that's by the by. My name's Colin Stone, this is the Pink Elephant Vlog, and here are five things to make sure your negotiation skills are up to scratch. Number one, set clear goals. In one of my first pitches as a freelancer, I called a London-based music magazine determined to start writing for them. The call went so well that I was unprepared for the final question they asked, would you come to meet the team in London and seal the deal? I fumbled out an answer about how I lived in Glasgow and that it would be tricky. It was a perfectly reasonable request, but the answer, a thinly disguised no, lost me the pitch. You can only achieve your goals if you're clear on what they are and what you're willing to give up to achieve them. Write a list of objectives from both your perspective and your clients. If you're unsure on your clients' objectives, ask the right questions to open them up. These goals will now act as your guiding stars. They'll help you make decisions in the meeting rather than deferring to a later point. They'll also help you tie down a good deal in the moment. Number two, assert yourself. If you're asked to commit to something that takes you further away from your goals, say no. If it really was unreasonable to travel to London, I should have answered no, but articulated a very good reason why, preferably from the client's point of view. For example, any time I spend traveling is time I'm unable to work for you, so I'm best in my office and we can have a virtual meeting. Now, before a negotiation, I always work out the difficult questions I could be asked. This gives me a much better chance of saying no confidently before framing the response to the benefits of the client. Number three, predict mutual success. Once you know your goals and the clients, start articulating a vision of what mutual success looks like. Start sentences with, by working together, we can, that will allow us both to, we can benefit from. If you do that positively, your future partners will begin to visualize a deal with equal parties gaining equal amounts. Number four, use silence. I remember attending a political seminar in Glasgow when I was a student when the speaker asked if the audience had any questions and all the hands stayed down. Foolishly, I raised mine, uncomfortable at how things had worked out for the speaker. As the microphone made its way to me, I remember thinking, I've absolutely no idea what I'm going to say. Eventually, I blurted out something unintelligible about the ongoing conflict in Libya. Cue much personal embarrassment. There's a clear rule in negotiation skills. He or she who speaks first loses. We hate silence, so we rush in to fill it with anything, even if we're unsure what to say. Leave uncomfortably long silences if you need to. Avoid rephrasing or repeating yourself. Hold eye contact and simply wait for the other person to speak. And number five, set clear rules of engagement. You've agreed the terms of the deal, but what now? I've seen many agreements in principle. They've remained just that, a principle without any money or business ever exchanging hands. I now realize it needs more, when would you like to go ahead? Who do we speak to about invoicing? How can we get a signed copy of the agreement? Only then is it really tied down. Well, that's all from this month's Pink Elephant vlog, but if you've enjoyed this video, do email us to find out more about a training session for you or your team. From media training to presentation skills and assertiveness training to name but a few, we've got you covered wherever you are in the world. And as Boris Johnson and Michelle Barnier continue to face off in Brussels, only one question remains. Whose negotiation skills will prevail?